In the life of every believer, there are moments that shape your walk with Jesus Christ. There comes a time in your life that if you give the devil permission and allow him into your life, whether you do it knowingly or unknowingly, he will come in and take everything that is near and dear to you. A preacher once said, give the devil an inch and he'll take a mile. The fact of the matter is that you were born in the middle of a cosmic war. And what you need to know is that Satan tried to dethrone God and failed and failed miserably. He knows that he can't compete with God. Therefore, he was left with a conundrum. How can you face an opponent with no flaw or weakness? That's where you and me come in. Whether you know it or not, you are the object of God's affection. Although we are made in his image, we are not perfect. And the human mind and the human body can be influenced by either the power of God from above or the power of evil from beneath. The fact that you are the object of God's affection puts you on the devil's hit list. Understand this, the devil is out to get you. He may pretend he is there to help you, but he's a master of disguise and he'll masquerade as something good or enticing to get you on his side. And once he has his hands on you, he will seek to destroy you. Why, you may ask? Because he knows God cares for you. See, the devil is fully aware that he cannot win against God. And the only thing that will give him some sense of satisfaction is to take you down. I am here simply to encourage you. Don't let him take you down. Don't let him take you down. The only way the devil can vent his hostility against God is through you. Refuse to be a part of the devil's plans. His goal is to frustrate God's plan in your life, to block and to hinder your road to salvation, to prevent God's fulfillment in your life to separate and alienate you from God and his kingdom. Let me be straight with you. This is a war for your life, for your family's life, for your soul. The destiny of your soul is at stake. Now, the enemy will use every strategy that he can to enter your life, to weaken you, to frustrate you, to tempt you, to lure you and to break you down. He does not tire, he does not stop. He is consistently after you, 24-7. His goal is not only to destroy you. His goal is not only to destroy your body. His goal is to destroy your soul, rob you of your health, rob you of your wealth. Everything you love, he's after it. John 10.10, 10, the thief comes only to steal. Knowing what you know now, are you seriously just going to sit there and let the enemy run riot in your life? Honestly, are you really just going to sit there and let the enemy steal your family, steal your wife, steal your husband, steal your children? Are you really just going to lay down and not put up a fight? No resistance, nothing. Are you really just going to hand it over to him? Hand over your business, hand over your health, hand over your education. After everything you've been through, are you really just going to hand it over without a fight? Are you really going to let the devil slap you around? Let him hang things over you? On your mind, on your life? How long are you going to go accepting things from him? Just thinking things just happen. Well, today is the day when you're going to say, I've had it. I'm not taking this anymore. Everything that the devil has stolen from me, I'm taking it back. Fighting the enemy is no easy feat. And most people haven't developed the backbone required to go eyeball to eyeball with the enemy. A preacher once said, it's difficult to fight an enemy you just got through sleeping with. The wonderful thing about Jesus Christ is he came to the earth as a man. And when he faced the enemy, he demonstrated what we should do as men and women of God. 
Jesus said when dealing with the enemy, it is written. The one thing that can get the enemy to run out of your life, out of your family, out of your business, is the word of God. There is a reason why in Ephesians 6, the word of God is described as the sword. Take your sword out. You need to know what is written. And not just to know what is written. For you, you need to speak what is written. Speak the word. When the enemy comes into your life like a flood, stand your ground and take your sword out in Luke 10 and go eyeball to eyeball with him and tell him, I have been given the authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, nothing will harm me. Stand your ground. When he tried to use one of his main tactics, which is fear, Tell him, for God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Stand your ground. When he thinks you are down, tell him, I'm not down, Satan. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? Stand your ground. When he tells you you're a loser, tell him, I am the head and not the tail. When the enemy comes after you, Tell him, Isaiah 54, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Stand your ground. When he whispers in your ear and tells you you can't do this, throw Philippians 4.13 to him. I am able to do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Stand your ground. When he comes with the spirit of condemnation and questions your salvation, and says you are not saved you did this you did that tell him i have confessed with my mouth and believed in my heart that god raised him from the dead i am saved stand your ground recognize that you're in a fight listen to this and write it down if you can't remember it you're never going to outgrow warfare you simply must learn to fight I hear people saying to me all the time, oh, when is it going to get easier? When you die. And some of us get to five months and 29 days and we give up. We didn't know we only had one more day. Never give up. There's no precedent in the Bible for giving up. You cannot bypass endurance. You know whom I'm speaking to at the moment? Me. You cannot bypass endurance and enter into the promises of God. You can come so far, but the completeness is only through endurance. And just when it seems impossible to hold out, that's the time to hold out. Don't give in. I would like to say that to several of you individually. You're in the test. You're doing all right. Just hang in there. Don't back out. Don't give up. God is faithful. It will be more glorious than the beginning. So rejoice and be glad. Amen. The enemy is a defeated foe. Jesus has triumphed. Victory belongs to everyone. No one should come up empty handed. But everyone should walk in full victory. Commanding and demanding their rights and privileges in Christ Jesus. Demanding nothing of the Father, he's the one that made the provision, but demanding of the devil who's endeavoring to throw off the plan of God, who's endeavoring to keep it from coming to pass. But it'll all come to pass. It'll all come to pass at last. Keep fighting. Don't give up. Don't give up. God is with you in the fight. 
The victory is already yours in Jesus' name. Now the amazing thing about the human conscience is this. That even if you don't believe what I'm saying, you believe what I'm saying. That even if you reject the truth of what I'm saying, there is rooted inside you a conviction which you can suppress with the years, but which is there nonetheless, which is telling you that these things are so. Keep fighting. Don't give up. Don't give up. God is with you in the fight. The victory is already yours in Jesus' name.